Hi, Taylor T. Carlson here, and time for another vinyl haul. Of course, my vinyl spending has not diminished at all. Got a few things from some of the local stores out here in Vegas, as well as a few that were birthday presents from my girlfriend. So, let's go ahead and get started. My girlfriend bought me this over at Record City. This is Wasp, The Last Command. This, of course, being a import colored vinyl reissue of the band's second album. Nice photo of the band there. This was the first album to feature Steve Riley and the final album to feature Randy Piper. Also the last album on which Blackie Lawless played bass rather than guitar. Here's the uh, lyric she insert. There's the uh, art on the other side of the insert. And got this beautiful looking yellow vinyl. Really stands out. One of Wasp's best albums featuring the hits Wild Child and Blind in Texas. This I found used at the Zia for like $3. This is Tommy Bolin teaser. Tommy Bolin, absolutely phenomenal guitarist, but unfortunately passed away from a drug overdose at the age of 25. This is a guy who played guitar in the James Gang after Joe Walsh, and a guy who played guitar for Deep Purple after Richie Blackman. He was certainly in demand, and he only finished two solo albums in his lifetime, but no one can deny what a great guitarist this guy was. Oddly enough, the insert that came with this is actually from a Yes album. Kind of funny when you go to a record store and you buy stuff, and there's no quality control, so you can get any random inner sleeve. And next up, a few from Cheap Trick. My girlfriend got me this one at Record City along with that other stuff. Heaven Tonight. This was their third album. Features the title cut, of course. The original version of Surrender that was later done live on the Budokan album. And then some great tunes like On Top of the World and California Man. The latter one of which being a cover of a song by The Move, the band that evolved into Electric Light Orchestra. Here's the uh, nice little photo in there. And then lyric sheet on that side. This is a 10-inch record. This is the Found All the Parts EP. This came out in 1980, a few months prior to the uh, All Shook Up album and collection of some you know, live songs and covers. They do the Beatles' Day Tripper on here. And then Take Me, I'm Yours was a minor hit for the band as well. So this was a nice little find that I wouldn't have expected. There's even a pretty cool little insert in there as well. Found this one at Zia for like maybe about uh, $12 used. This is The Doctor. This was an obscure 80s album from Cheap Trick, generally regarded as one of the worst albums in their catalog, although I still think it's pretty listenable. This came out, I think, right not too long after they did the song for the Top Gun soundtrack. And this is one of the releases they did that did not have you know, classic bassist Tom Peterson on it. I think this was the last album they did before he rejoined the band. But it is nice to always find an obscure gem like this. Another 10-inch record here. This is the uh, Miko music from Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Miko, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, also did the disco version of the original Star Wars theme that interpolated the Cantina Band music as well. And this does the same thing with some music from Empire Strikes Back. The logo on here looks pretty official. There's even a photo of Yoda, so... This must have been made with the blessing of Lucasfilm, interestingly enough. Got your credits right there. Tony Bon Jovi was a producer on this. He's the second cousin of John Bon Jovi. One of my favorite finds. I got this over at Moondog Records. This is The Power Station, self-titled 1985 debut. This band features about half the guys from Duran Duran, plus Robert Palmer and drummer Tony Thompson, who'd played with you know, several artists, including on some of the early Madonna records. This album will forever be known for the classic hit Some Like It Hot, as well as their cover of the T-Rex song, Bang It Gone, Get It On. Here's the uh, lyric sheet, photos of the band on that side. And they reunited for one other album in the 90s that was obviously not nearly as well known. Another great Moondog Records find, this is Freely's Comet, Second Sight. Ace Frehley's band after he'd left Kiss several years after the fact, featuring Ace in addition to Todd Howarth also on you know, guitar and vocals, and then just an assortment of pretty high quality musicians on here. 
They did two albums under this name, plus a live EP that had one unreleased studio track. And if you look at the uh, production credits and so forth down there, there's a listing for someone named Ed Trunk. That's Eddie Trunk, the uh, radio and TV rock metal personality, because he worked for Megaforce Records who released this album. Here's the insert. There's a photo here of a guy's foot turned around, and that foot is actually Eddie Trunk, something that he revealed on his radio show several years ago that I, of course, did not know before the fact. And this was the last of the things that my girlfriend got me for my birthday. This came from Ziad. It's a new reissue. This is Deep Purple, Come Taste the Band. Coming back to Tommy Bullen here. This is the only studio album he did with Deep Purple. The only studio album from the Mark IV lineup. They broke up the following year. David Coverdale on vocals, who, of course, went on to form White Snake. This is a great underrated record that never really seems to get the proper credit, even though I'd say it's a personal favorite. Beautiful inner gatefold there with a lot of photos. And then you got your lyric sheets on the inserts. And the record itself is this sort of, what else would it be? Deep purple colored. Got this in the budget bin at Record City. This is a best of compilation of Ricky Nelson. Ricky Nelson, of course, the son of Ozzy and Harriet Nelson, and he's the father of Matthew and Gunnar Nelson from the band Nelson. I love this, like, Andy Warhol-style cover art that they have on here. Ricky Nelson recorded some great music over the years, and uh, great to have a two-LP set that has most of his big hits. This doesn't include the song Garden Party, so this obviously would have come out before that, but you know, I'll open up this inner gatefold here, got... Yeah, more of the colored photos, which I don't know if they were going for like an Andy Warhol thing here or what, but I do like the way those look. There's actually a, a booklet in here that's got some pretty cool photos of him back in his younger years. So over at Record City, this has definitely been one of my better budget bin finds. And my last one, I actually started going to concerts again since Vamped out here in Vegas is actually having some... And I bought this when I saw Enough's Enough. This is the Peach Fuzz album. I even got Chips Enough to autograph this after the concert. Cool dude. And he does all the lead vocals in the band now as well. Kind of an obscure you know, mid-90s album. And it's Peach Fuzz, so of course it's on peach-colored vinyl. I'm glad to say they're selling vinyl. They were a little expensive, otherwise I probably would have bought the other one. I, I think the other record they were selling out there was the covered in gold covers album which I wouldn't mind having on vinyl but they wanted 40 bucks per vinyl so gonna have to get that another time if I can find it for a lower price have you made any good vinyl finds lately comment down below and let me know what you think also as always remember to subscribe to my channel for more context I'm always posting new videos and give this one a like if you found it helpful I'm Taylor T Carlson see you next time